reached that stage in the new user primer for the events calendar that I'd like to walk you through the various front end views that ship with the plugin, both those that come with the free the events calendar, list view and calendar month view, as well as those that come with the pro release, which include the two that I just mentioned, as well as photo view, map view, week view, and day view. Now, it's important to note, I'm not going to cover these in great depth here. We've already walked through them in screencasts that I created during the lead up to the 3.0 release. So if you want to see a whole video dedicated to any one of these views, we have them over on the Tribe website. They haven't changed much, and so the functionality and the instructions there are all still going to ring true. And between that and the written instructions in the new user primer, you should have plenty of guidance to get yourself started with these various views. Here we are at the front end of my site, and I'm at slash events, which is my default events page. And since I set list view as my default view, it's what we see when we come to slash events. Notice at the top we have this events bar, and you're going to see this events bar persisting across every view that we visit in this demo. This ships as turned on with the plugin. We're expecting that people are going to use this, but you can disable it as you, as you wish under the general event settings on the back end. It allows us three general buckets of filtering. It allows us to filter by date, so my front end users could say they only want to see events from a certain date forward. It allows us to filter by keywords, so they could search through a specific keyword or a term and it would narrow out everything that didn't meet that criteria. Or we could search by a location or a distance. Whatever I want to do, I could do any of them individually or collectively, it's going to refine the results that appear below. And if I have the live JavaScript filtering on, it will refine them immediately. I won't have to even hit this find events button. Only if the live JavaScript filtering is turned off, which is a general events setting, will they have to use this button. Similarly, if you don't want them to have this events bar at all, you can absolutely disable it. It also is a general events setting, and if you turn it off, it'll just revert to the old fashion that we had prior to building the events bar. Over here is the view picker, and this allows us to just switch between any available views that are turned on on the site. This is how we're going to navigate between all the views as we test them out today. So let's look at list view, and list view existed in 2.x, and so we didn't reinvent the wheel here, we just kind of gave it a facelift. We get into our upcoming events header with the option to show only the first instance of recurring events. If I were to check this, it would not show me an entire recurrence pattern, but would instead just show the first upcoming instance of the events in that recurrence pattern. And then I get down into my actual event list. We lead in with the month headers. We have the event title, when it's taking place, and if it's a recurring event, we'll see this with the tooltip. We have the venue page if we're running pro, and then we have the description with a link again into the actual entry itself. Get into a new month, the new month header shows, and it shows me all the events taking place that month. Featured images are nicely scaled down and shown on the side here, so it populates that appropriately. And really, we're looking at, as you would expect, a list of upcoming events. Get down to the bottom, I have the option to go view past events or go view next events. And if I'm using Pro, I can import into iCal. So this is one of the views that ships with both Core and Pro. Let's go to Month View, the other view that ships with both Core and Pro. And this is another one that exists in the 2.x lifecycle, but we've really just given a facelift to for the 3.0 build. Notice that it's the end of June. Today is June 26th, and so a lot of these events have already passed. The calendar is now designed to aesthetically indicate when designs have passed, or excuse me, when events have passed. Notice this. Everything from before the 26th is showing here is kind of grayed out, harder to see. It's telling me you can still look at these if you want, but you're not going to have any use for them because that event already took place, and so you can't attend it. If we go... Go forward to July, for example, and check out how July is looking. This is going to be more of an accurate representation. This is an untainted month, and this is showing us a month where all events have yet to take place. Pretty straightforward. The events all show in their dates. They have a tooltip. Pops it up. If there's a featured image, that'll show in there as well. And then we can toggle forward or backward a month. Notice, too, on days like the 10th. Whenever there are more than three events, it's going to hide anything past the third event behind the fold, if you will, or behind the link that shows this view all option. If I clicked through to that, it would take me to day view for a specific day. But right now, it's only showing me the first three of these events. You can configure which events appear here above the fold on the event by event creation basis. We saw this on the event creation screencast, so if you want to toggle over to that one, take a pause here, come back, you'll see that there's an option you can set when setting up your events that dictates it appearing before the link versus after it. However, day view seems as good a place to go next, and we can toggle there right here by clicking this view all option. So let's go into day view. We're looking at all events that are taking place on a specific day, Wednesday, July 10th. Now this is pretty similar to list view, it's just a loop, but notice how it leads. We lead off with all day events, shows us the information we'd want to know. Then we get down into the fixed hour range events, starting with 10 o'clock a.m., 12 o'clock p.m., etc. As always, I can go next day or previous day. It's basically a mini loop of all the events taking place on a given day. Nothing too out of the ordinary here. So we've looked at list, we've looked at month, now let's check out week. Like day view, week is a pro-exclusive feature and it shows all events taking place a given week. Here's events the week of July 7th. 
Notice all day events appear up top. They all have this little tool tip that'll pop up for us, give us the description, featured image if there is one. All day events are up top, and then we get into the fixed hour range down below. I've, when, I've got multiple events, such as this Portland WordPress meetup and the monthly tribal council meeting. They don't overlap in such a way that's going to confuse me. It's obvious where one end and the next begins. And so don't feel like you can't schedule multiple events at the same time. The system will absolutely know how to handle that. Scrolling down here, once again, we have the option to go next or previous weeks. Week view is pretty straightforward. The only last point I want to make is you can dictate what day the week view starts here via what you set for your overall WordPress settings. You'll remember that there is a WordPress setting to determine what day the week starts on. And if you were to set that to something like Tuesday, Tuesday would appear here instead of Sunday. So you can control when the week starts just by that overall WordPress setting. That covers week view. We've already done day view. Let's check out map view. Map view, as you would expect, is prominently dominated by a map. This map is showing us all of the events that are taking place that have a map associated with them or a geolocation associated with them. If I were to start to narrow this down, say find events that are only taking place today or find events that are only matching a certain keyword or near a certain location, the map will refine itself accordingly. I will not need to see certain events that are taking place, say, in the United Kingdom or on the east coast of the United States if I'm looking for things that are near Seattle. I would just see events up in the Pacific Northwest. The map will respond based on what is appearing in the list down below here. This is just a basic list view, a basic loop, but whatever appears down here is impacting the map up top. So just keep that in mind. The search option, and then we release the filter tools as well, which is going to be a separate plugin. Those will all also integrate with the map. So you can use your filtering and see that reflected visually right up here. Otherwise, everything else down below is pretty consistent with a list. And again, we have the next and previous options. The last view then is photo view. This is for the more aesthetic minded among you, because this one really makes good use of photos. For people who attach featured images to their events, I suspect you're going to want to make photo view a prominent feature of your site, because it puts together a poster board type effect that does show those images nicely. It can bring in events that don't have a featured image attached to them. You'll notice that some of these don't have featured images attached to them, and it's not disastrous. But if you are going to be using photo view, you're probably not going to want to have a site that's just dominated by imageless events, because they will appear kind of bland on this page. Photo view does give you the option to make the most of your aesthetics, and this site came across looking pretty nice. Again, down at the bottom, as with all these other views, I could toggle forward to next events or back to previous events, and it'll take me where I'd want to go. But those are the views, and those are the views that you can enable or disable as you see fit. As long as one view is enabled on the front end at any given time, and it doesn't matter what that one view is, you'll be set. So sometimes your users aren't going to need week view, and they're not going to need photo view, but they might want map view, and they might want grid calendar view. So then you leave grid calendar view enabled, and you leave map view enabled, and you turn the rest of them off. When they come up here, those will be the only two options in this drop down, and it'll seem like a fairly seamless experience for them. That's it in terms of the views. I hope this made sense. There's some more detail in the new user primer that you're going to find value in, so check that out too.